everything can be done in just five steps. Uh, uh. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, the best place for avant-garde makeup and high-end retouching. Today I'm going to be showing you how to color correct your photos in just five steps. You might find yourself with photos that are too bright, too saturated, or too bland. As a makeup artist, I constantly find myself at wits with the raw images coming out of my camera and thinking, oh, it looks so much better in real life or in person. So how do I fix that? Well, if you want to learn how to edit your photos in a cinematic way, then keep on watching. I'm going to be using two Adobe programs, Lightroom and Photoshop. Now there are so many ways to use these programs to edit your photos, but today I'm going to be providing you with the techniques that I personally use to edit each of my photos. I use Adobe Lightroom CC 2015 because that's my favorite version. However, if you have a newer version or older version, the techniques and tools that I'm providing you with are going to be relevant regardless of which version you have downloaded. Just note that the tools that I mentioned may be located in slightly different places. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've already imported your photos into Lightroom so I can get straight to step one, which is to adjust the exposure and contrast of your photo. I've already gone through and selected my favorite shots, so if you want to know how I did that, then make sure you leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button so that I can make a video about workflow. Now, exposure refers to how light the photo is, and contrast refers to how intense the difference between light and dark is. Toggle the two tabs very minimally from left to right in order to adjust it. I usually add a little bit of exposure to brighten up the photo if it seems a little bit on the darker side, and I always add more contrast because I like my makeup to look more vivid. In the next section, there's also four categories that you can play with. Personally, I like to accentuate the highlights and the whites, and I like to bring down the shadows and the blacks. In step two, we're going to adjust the clarity, vibrance, and saturation of your photo. I add anywhere from 5 to 15 for clarity, but not any more than that because it creates an HDR effect, which could risk making your photo look very cartoony. The vibrance and saturation both control how intense the colors are. I like to add a lot of vibrance and just a little bit of saturation or keep it the same. The clarity adjusts how sharp the image is. When you scroll down, there's another section pertaining to lighting called tone curves. If you are satisfied with how you've already edited your lighting in the sections above, then you can ignore this part, but you have the option of adding more complexity to the lighting. Otherwise, skip to the next section. Moving on to step three, we're going to be changing the hue and saturation of specific colors. This is super helpful if you have one or two colors that you want to change or enhance or get rid of. In the hue section, you can adjust the color such as blue to a more aqua tone, more cyan, or more magenta or violet. All you have to do is toggle that bar from right to left or vice versa. Under the saturation section, I like to lower the amount of yellow and orange in my photo because my skin has more of a redder or yellower undertone to it, so it gets picked up by the camera really easily, and I don't want that to look too intense when I up the vibrance or saturation of the photo. There's a third section, as you can see, called luminance. I normally don't touch this, but just so you know, this section allows you to make specific colors lighter or darker. Scroll all the way down to step four, which is called camera calibration. And in this section, you can edit everything manually. However, there's also a preset or presets that Lightroom offers under the profile section, so you can change it to something like camera vivid. However, I like to keep it at Adobe standard and change each different color channel by myself. I leave the shadows alone, but you can tint the shadows to green or magenta, but it does change the photo pretty significantly. This might work better if you have a landscape photo, but not as much if you have a portrait photo like me. Instead, I work with the red, green, and blue primaries. This functions very similarly to what we did in step three with the hue and saturation. However, this is more like a channel mixer, which affects the entire image more holistically because it's targeting the specific channels of RGB, red, green, blue. See where I'm going? For the reds, I prefer a warmer tone, so I'm going to be toggling this bar towards the right side, but I don't want it to be too intense, so I'm decreasing the amount of saturation that's in it. For the greens, I like it more apple-toned, which has more blue in it, than olive-toned, which has more yellow in it. 
and after testing it on the photo, I like it a lot and I'm going to increase the saturation so I can see it better overall. As for the blues, I don't like it to cyan or purple, so I'm actually going to leave it at zero as is. But since the majority photo is made out of the blue, I want to increase the saturation to increase its intensity. Now that I'm satisfied with steps one through four, I'm going to sync all my edits from this one photo to the rest of the photo shoot. So all you have to do is click the photo that you have currently edited, hold down shift, select the last photo of the collection, and that should select all of the in-between images. Check all the boxes except for crop, and then click synchronize. This should copy all of my edits from that one photo to the rest of my photo shoot. And this works perfectly well if you kept your lighting consistent, but if you changed backgrounds or changed your lighting in between shots, then you might have to do some tweaking. So I still recommend going through each photo and making sure that they all look its best. To move on to step five, I need to export all my photos that I want to edit into a separate folder. There is a way in Lightroom to edit specific photos in Photoshop and not have to export it first. But my preference is to export everything, have a look at the ones that I really, really like before dragging it into Photoshop and doing my final color correction to it. To show you an example, I'm going to export my favorite shot and bring it into Photoshop. Before the final step, I've already retouched the skin of my photo like magic. Just kidding, it's not magic, but it does only take five simple steps. So if you want to learn how I retouch skin, click the link in the upper right corner right now. But assuming you've already retouched your skin, step five requires you to add an adjustment layer of gradient overlay. For this gradient overlay, I'm using three colors, dark purple, dark green, and white. There are default gradients that you can use if you don't want to create your own. When you're done creating your gradient overlay, change the blending mode to linear light and adjust the opacity, which is how transparent the layer is, down to whatever you're comfortable with. But usually I lower it down to 50% opacity and 50% fill. And that's all there is to it. As long as you know all the tools and how to use them, then you can edit your photos in an endless number of ways. If you found this video helpful at all, then please hit that subscribe button and notification bell because in my next video, I'll be showing you how to digitally contour your photos using light and shadow in another five simple step tutorial. Five simple step tutorial, woohoo! Like and share this with your friends, stay creative, and I will see you in the next one. To infinity and color correction! Am I sweating?